What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again today with our tape diagram playlist. Today we're going to be talking about part whole models for multiplication. So let's take the tape off and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to develop a part whole model to solve a multiplication word problem. So we've had a few different lessons about the whole part whole model. We talked about using it for addition word problems, for subtraction word problems, and today we're going to be talking about it for multiplication. Um, it's going to be the same exact part whole model. Okay, It's going to visually show the relationship between the different parts and the whole. Uh, you could have two parts, you could have three parts, you could have five parts, you could have 40 parts. Okay, um, But we want to make sure we label it. And some of you would have the question, right, when would I use this? So if you're given different parts and you want to find the whole, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, next lesson, we'll be talking about if you're given the whole and want to find the parts or the groups. Uh, but today we're going to focus on this first part. Our three key thoughts are the same uh, as for the first two lessons about part whole models. You want to show the correct relationship between the numbers, okay? You want to label the model correctly, and you want to be neat, right? You, at, at some level, you can't just be scribbling all over your paper. Now, I'm not the neatest person, but if you slow down and take your time, you can make it neat enough to show conceptually what is happening. All right, so here we have 5 times 6 equals 30. And I love using the part whole model for this because it just... It shows what multiplication is. It, it's going to lead into division, which we're going to talk about next lesson. Uh, this is exactly what I want my students picturing. So the first thing we have to understand is this multiplication sign, um, multiplication is repeated addition. So this multiplication sign really says groups of, right? So we have five groups of six. And so when you first learn multiplication, you typically learn about it in arrays. Or you might draw, you know, uh, five of these and put, you know, six dots in there. Eventually, you could kind of lead yourself to just drawing six and you add them up, okay? Um, and that's perfect. That's exactly what this part whole model does, except it's going to relate it to addition. So you have your part whole model right here, all right? And for your part whole model, uh, there's three different parts, right? You have your whole, you have your parts, the value of them, and then you have your groups. And when we're just doing addition, we might label this as red apples or green apples, but we're going to be using this top part to label our groups this time. So we have five groups of six. That means we need five equal groups out of this. And right here you can see I only have four, which is fine because I can just kind of draw another equal group right here. Now, again, these are equal groups. That's where the neatness comes in. So you can't have, now these aren't perfect, right? But you can't have it looking like this where you have, okay, I have a group of six and a group of six. These are obviously both not equal. So here's what I'm gonna label my group. I have one, two, three, four, five groups, and then there is six in each, right? Check out our What is Multiplication song. Um, if you need a catchy song to help your uh, students know what the factors mean, what the multiplication sign means, you can check out the link right here. Um, click on that, it's an awesome song. Um, but I have five groups and I have six in each. So here you have five groups of six and obviously that would be 30. So you can see the relationship between your equal parts and if you added them all up, did repeated addition, that would give you 30. Now it's important that the, your students know the difference between the commutative property, right? Because if it was six groups of five, you'd wanna draw your tape diagram correctly and have six groups and then five in each. But this is the same thing as the part whole model before, except now we're just doing equal groups. Let's take a look at a I do problem so you can kind of see this in action. So as always, we are going to be doing our sides check strategy, okay? I'm gonna start my statement. My question says, how many pieces of gum are there? So my statement is going to say, there are blank pieces of gum. Now when I go back in, as we always talk about, if you're new to this, your statement's going to identify what's important in the word problem. My questions ask me about pieces and then of gum, right? So I'm looking for anything about pieces of gum. So I'm going to circle five packs of gum. And the, again, you should always be asking your students, why are you circling it? Don't just circle it because it's a number. Don't be a number grabber. That's how you get in trouble. And they should be able to explain to you, I'm circling five packs of gum because that's about gum. And my statement is asking me about gum. Here I have the word each. I circled this a thousand times. Each pack has three pieces of gum in it. How many pieces of gum are there? So I see that this word each is telling me that I'm gonna have equal groups, right? So a lot of times we use this word each and we say, okay, you're multiplying or you're dividing. And that's not incorrect. I mean, that, that's, that's not wrong, but to me it's the wrong way to teach it because each doesn't tell me I'm doing multiplication or division. Each tells me one. 
So one pack has three pieces of it. So it's telling me that I have equal groups, right? Each pack is equal. They each have three pieces of gum in it. And that's a different thought process, but it's going to help your students conceptually understand and not just be a keyword grabber. So that tells me that I'm going to be doing a part whole model because I knew I had equal groups. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it right there. Okay. And I know I have five packs of gum and each pack has three pieces of gum in it. How many pieces of gum are there? All right. So this is why I love this right here. This is why it's so important. There are three parts to your part whole model. You have your whole, right? So whatever the whole tape diagram is equal to. You have your parts of it, which go inside. And then you have your groups, okay? So there's three different parts of this part whole model we need to fill out before we can answer our question. And the reason I love this is because these questions right here can be so tricky sometimes to figure out, okay, am I dividing? Am I multiplying, right? What am I doing? And if you can teach your students this thought process, this will be a huge benefit to them and then to you because you won't spend half your day telling every student the same exact thing. Here is the key for this. Okay, here's your key thought. You can check it out down here. The parts in the whole have to be the same thing. Okay, um, what I mean by that is, and let's just take it to a completely different abstract thing. If your parts are poop, right, your whole can't be a car. You can't take a bunch of poop and build a car with it. Okay. If your whole is a car, then your parts have to be a car, right? You're going to take the parts of a car and build it. It goes back to decomposing all the way back to number bonds, which we should have been teaching them in kindergarten, first, second grade, right? So I know that I have two different numbers right here. I have packs of gum and pieces of gum, okay? And then I know that my question is also asking me for pieces of gum. So where does that go on my part whole model? Well, I know that my pieces of gum were how much were in each pack. And this word each is telling me that this is going to be on the inside. So I'm going to have equal groups of three, right? Each pack has three pieces of gum. So if my parts are pieces of gum, then that means when I add them up, my answer is also going to have to be pieces of of gum, right? If your parts are pieces of gum, your whole has to be pieces of gum. Makes a lot of sense. And my question's asking me, or my statement's saying, there are blank pieces of gum. So that means I know my question mark goes right here. All right. Well, how many packs do I have? Five. So I have one, two, three, four, and five packs of gum. And each of them had three pieces in them. Now I know that I'm looking for my whole tape diagram, so I could do three plus three plus three plus three plus three, or you have five groups of three, and your answer is going to be 15, right? So you identified, you developed your plan, you wrote your equation, and you solved it. All right, so go ahead, try this we do problem. You can pause it and then push play, check, and understand it. Remember when you're doing your tape diagram, labeling does matter. You wanna make sure that you label what the numbers are so that way you can double check to make sure you're doing it right. Okay, so hopefully you just paused it and I'm gonna do my sides check. So now I know that I'm repeatedly doing something, right? I'm, I'm giving pieces and I'm trying to find the total. So I'm gonna do my part whole model. All right, make it nice and big this time. Okay, there we go. I know that there are five boxes of gum. Each of those has four packs and each pack has three pieces. And I'm looking for my pieces, okay? So I know I'm looking for the total number of uh, pieces of gum, there we go, or pie of gum, if you will. There we go, bad handwriting. So I know there are five boxes, that's gonna be my groups. So I'm gonna make five equal boxes, just have to add one right here. Do my best to make it equal. I'm gonna label those one, two, three, four, five boxes, okay? And I know each box has four packs. So every box or one box has four packs in it. So the way you could do that, you could kind of split this up and do four. Now, there's two different ways to do it. You could split all of them into four, okay? But then it kind of it would kind of get messy. I know I'm looking for pieces of gum. This is four boxes. I'm not to pieces of gum yet, but it says, or sorry, four packs. Each pack has three in it, three pieces of gum. So if I put three in each, I know that there are a total of 12 pieces of gum in a box. So if you figure that out for the first one, 
you could just write 12 in the rest of them. And again, that's pieces of gum. And so I know that that's the same thing as my total. My parts have to be the same thing as my whole. Or the other way you could do is you could split each of those into four and write three in each one. Whatever works for you, I just know because I'm not neat, I'm not gonna make my students do something I'm not willing to do. Okay, so that's why I did it like that. And you can either do 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12, or you could do five groups of 12, and your answer would be 60. So there are 60 pieces of gum in there. Now, I'm sure you get the right math answer. These questions are not about the math answer. It's about being able to draw the tape diagram and then explain it to students of not only what you're doing, but why you're doing it. And then if you want to... So what we want you to take with you, put it on your cassette tape, especially as we go into the next lesson because it's going to make it so much easier down the road when you start doing division. It's important to label the groups, parts, and holes correctly to help the students check their work. Your parts and your whole should be the same thing. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options. We would love for you to join our Instructor Beats family by clicking the subscribe button. Uh, turn on your notifications. You get all our new lessons, all our new songs when we come out with them. Uh, follow us on all our social media accounts. Again, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.